check one. Check.
Welcome to worship at First Baptist Church. We're excited that you're joining us for worship. We're excited that we get to praise our Savior and our King. And as we do so, I just want to remind you that things are opening back up. We see people coming this morning, and we also have youth ministry things that are hoping to gear up and get going for this summer. And we're hoping to do a bunch of different activities and get Sunday school started back up. And just want to invite you um, to let your friends and family know about that. Um, and so as just... I'm just invite you to worship with us this morning. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day today, a day that we have seen more people show up at church service, and we thank you for that. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you've given us, your, our lives just our families, and just to be together. Dear Lord, we thank, thank you for those that are here today and for those that are not able to be here today. We just, we just love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we continue worshiping this morning, this is the time that our congregation comes together in prayer as we recognize the incredible blessings that, give, that God gives us as well as these times of, of sharing with each other what's going on here and we can lift those up together with God. So as we begin this morning, does anyone have any praises this morning you'd like to share? Yes, I'd like uh, to thank those of the church family that came uh, to our house this past week to help us unload a, a large uh, U-Haul truck that we had to move things down from my in-laws down to our house um, to store. And they were able to unload that truck in just, just over an hour in record time. And we really do appreciate it, and I thank all those members. Thank you. Awesome, Lee. I just wanted to say that um, I'm thankful that it looks like we're going to get to the, go to the Holy Land trip this year that we had planned last year. Unfortunately, we're down from 18 down to about six that are going, 
but uh, there's still time you could get on. It's going to be a wonderful trip. It leaves June the 21st. Uh, Israel is opening up May the 23rd for tourists. You require a COVID shot to get in, but uh, it will be a wonderful 10-day trip, June the 21st to June the 30th. Okay. Yay, that's a praise. I just wanted to share, I had an email this morning from the Bolix, and they are, they've been, got their shots, and they're preparing to go back to Chile, and uh, Dwight, through all of this, has been involved in helping set up water um, storage tanks in several countries. He demonstrates it to a group, and then they go back to their communities, and demonstrate it and different families then begin to have water for reserve during the dry spell. So we're excited. So praise for the, the Bullocks and, and all our missionaries who also are dealing with COVID in their own countries and how they're dealing with that. Our uh, nephew, Luke Hoskins, was cleaning his gun and I, his gun had jammed and, and I don't know, he shot his hand and I'm not sure if he completely shot one finger off. This was through the week, and the surgery is not until tomorrow. So his wife was really concerned of how much of his hand they're going to be able to save. And so think of him tomorrow. He'll be having surgery. Mm. Please pray for um, my community that I grew up in in Owensburg, Indiana, in Greene County. There was a a murder-suicide um, this weekend with, with three dead with that. And there's so much going on in the news, I didn't even see it on the news anywhere, but pray for my little community of Owensburg, Indiana. And my neighbor, Roger Jones, went through surgery fine, and he got dismissed the day after surgery, and they took a biopsy of his kidney, and that'll be back in about a week. And please pray for Neil Pruitt will be having a procedure at the end of the month, so lift them up in prayer. Anything else? And also, we're going to do a special prayer for not only all those folks that we've just mentioned, but also Josh. Um, Josh, remember on Palm Sunday, he was going to, to speak on Palm Sunday, um, but instead had a kidney stone um, early Sunday morning. And as he was at the hospital getting that taken care of through the imaging that they were doing, they saw something on his heart. Um, that was that his um, aortic root and the top of his heart were um, enlarged. And so he's been running tests and, and doing, been doing that since then. And it looks like um, surgery is probably in his future to try to repair that. And um, Josh is 28 and he's young. And as he's looking toward these procedures, is, is full of hope and that God will take care of this and thankful for the technology that exists to, to be able to do that. So I would love it if, Josh, could you come up here? And Elizabeth. And if you feel comfortable, come on up and we can put hands on Josh. And then also, if you're in your seat, let's just bow your head and, and put your um, hand forward um, toward um, Josh and Elizabeth. And this will represent um, our affirmation of the incredible work that God is doing in their lives. God, we are so thankful that as we are on this, this journey of life, we never know what's coming around the corner, what's over the next hill, um, what, we, what barrier or wall or obstacle we have to face. But we are certain for one thing, that everywhere we go, everything that we have to face or endure, you're right there. God, as your warmth, your love, your healing power, um, goes with us, that as we can face whatever there is in our journey, that your hope, your courage, your, your abundant life is always with us. God, we pray an incredible blessing on Josh and those we mentioned this morning, that just that from, the heads, from their heads to their toes, they can feel your presence, they can feel 
you as they're on their journey. And God, as the great physician and healer, we ask a special work now in Josh's life. God, we pray that as he continues to get tests and seeks counsel on the best direction to go, that things will go extremely well. God, we even pray um, for healing within his heart and his artery, that it will decrease. God, that as we look at the imaging, that will show less and less as time goes on. But God, we just lift all these things up to you as our incredible Savior and Lord. And as we do so, we recognize that as we submit at the, feet, at the foot of your cross, we do so honoring and glorifying you. And God, all the work that you do, we just praise your holy name, the holy name of Jesus, your name we pray. Amen. We come now in the time of our service to take and uh, give back a portion of what God has blessed us so richly with. Uh, if you're not aware of it, our offering plates are on the back table at the end of the pews. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come this morning thanking you for everything that you do for us, those that we see and those that we don't. We know that you're always there with us. You have our anxieties and our stresses. You give us a promise there that if you lay your burdens on, our burdens on you and pick up your yoke, it will be light. So just thank you for all that you do for us. We thank you most of all for your love extended through your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior for a promise of eternity and being with you. Forgive us where we fail you. Help us to do better. These things we pray in Christ's name. Amen.
Let us now sing together hymn number 231, Jesus Shall Reign. Now let us sing together hymn number 358, I am thine, O Lord. When I 
Thank you, music team, for leading us again. And Jonathan, is it Dr. John yet? Uh, in May. In May, okay. If you didn't know it, um, Jonathan is just finishing up his PhD. His dissertation went great, and so very soon, he, soon he'll be Dr. Stanley. And just cur- with, with Bach and Handel this morning, and those are often paid, um, played at weddings, is that in honor of the royal wedding? You hadn't thought about that. Okay, just checking. As we worship this morning, let's begin with a word of prayer. God, as we take a moment, we recognize your glory, your power in our lives, God. Teach us how to be representatives of you in this broken world that we live in. Teach us to understand how blessed we are to be able to be a part of your, your plan of redemption for the world, how blessed we are to represent you, to, to point our fingers in your direction to everyone around us. So God, as we worship this morning, teach us more fully about what that means. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen. I have a friend who passed not too long ago, and he, didn't, he wasn't in our church family. Um, he attended another church in town. Um, but when he saw me, he would always greet me with this certain greeting. Father Randy, how are you doing? And he kn- knows that I'm Baptist and we do not call our ministers father. Um, so he did it, I think, one as a joke. And then also, though, as a, a thing of respect, um, but also as a term of endearment. But for him, it was always Father Randy. Um, I would like for us to just think about what does, what, what is a priest's role and what is a priest? For all of us, we may have different backgrounds as we come to worship here this morning. And, and today we have different um, denominations have different titles that they call their, their ministers from rectors to priests. And they have different titles of reverend um, to hey you. Um, but all sorts of, of, of titles that we do for the people who minister in our congregations. But what I'd like to look at this morning is biblically, what is a priest? What does that look like? And how does that affect us today as we understand what priests are? Some biblical scholars say actually, even though the term is never used, but they say in a way, Adam and Eve were our first priests. And what do they mean by that? If you look at the, the, the story in Genesis of looking at the opening here of, of the beginning of creation and God creating humanity, putting them in the garden, that the responsibilities that were given to Adam and Eve to um, work the ground and to do things and taking care of things, the word that is used for work there is also the same Hebrew word that's used for worship and other things. It's, it's, there's a priestly vocabulary that is being used there in the original Hebrew that's describing what Adam and Eve are doing is really a very holy work that God has called them to do there in the garden. 
And it says, and then Yahweh Elohim took the human and placed him in the Garden of Eden to work it and keep it. So these, these words here, to work and keep, are packed with significance within the Hebrew scriptures. Packed with significance of the work that is done, and it's part of the, the vocation of humanity. So also, I want to look at what is described here in this, these early passages in Genesis. The phrase, created in the image of God, is used. And I've mentioned this before in a sermon last year. But being created in the image of God is a very important statement here. I know growing up that, and, and in my reading, I'm, I'm wondering, does that mean that God has, you know, ten fingers and ten toes, and that we're in the image of God and God looks like us? It means a lot more than that. It looks at the idea of the word for image is also the same word that's used throughout the Hebrew scriptures in describing an idol that is created. And in other religions, you know how they would have these idols, and these idols would be in their, their temples or in their home. And that idol that sat in that person's home was a representative of the bigger deity, you know, the false god that would be worshipped. Well, here in Genesis... God is turning that completely on his head. And the idea of us as humanity saying in the image of God, it's the same phrasing to say that we are idols ourselves. Not to be worshipped, but that we are called within, as God created us, we're supposed to represent our holy God. We're called to represent our creator. So that when we are living and working within creation itself that we are supposed to represent the living God and as we're created in the image of God there's a sense within that word that carries with it that we are representing the holy God of the universe to the rest of creation and that's a big task um, for us to have also there's a sense of of duty and vocation in that concept of being created in the image of God so, for example, during ancient times, um, when the phrase in other religions, in other, in Babylonian culture and others, the only one that was in the image of God was the king, you know, the one who was in charge of everyone. And they would use this phrase to let people know that, you know, I as the king am in the image of God and what I do is represents God himself and therefore you need to listen to what I say because I'm in the image of God. And here in Genesis, it's very clear that we're all created in the image of God. And so we all carry that calling, that vocation to represent God to all of creation and as we go and do our work and do what God has called us to do that we're representing a holy God in what we do now the concept of, of being priest is fleshed out more as we go deeper into Genesis and we have an understanding that um, in our passage this morning as Danny puts it up that I want to look a little deeply into is Exodus 19. And here we have these, these series of conversations that God is having with Moses as Moses is representing God to the Israelite people. And at this point in time, God has a very special statement. He's, he's wanting to, to continue an understanding of that covenant between the Israelite people in God and what their responsibilities are and their duties as being the people of God. And so then starting in verse 3, then Moses went up to God, and this is at Mount Sinai, and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, this is what you are to say to the descendants of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, if you obey me fully and keep my covenant, then out of all nations, you will be my treasured possession. And although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words you are to speak 
to the Israelites. And so here God himself is telling Abraham, out of you, of your descendants, that the nation that is coming from you, I am calling to be a nation of priests. That's an understanding that the people are not to just take that relationship with God and think, we're God's chosen people. We're awesome. It's much more than that. It's a calling that the nation of Israel is called to be priests to all the other nations, that they are supposed to represent God so that when people encounter the Israelites, that when they see them, that they get a glimpse and an understanding of who God is as they represent God in all that they do. We as Baptists and some other denominations too have a phrase, the priesthood of all believers. And this is an understanding that because of Jesus being our ultimate high priest, that we have this incredible opportunity that we can represent God right now through our faith in God. We can represent God to the, everyone else. We, as individuals, as a Christian, we do not have anyone who is between us and God. We have direct access to the throne. We have direct access to the cross. We have direct access to redemption. And that we are all in this biblical understanding in the Old Testament of priests, that we are all priests. That because of this relationship of God that we have, we do not have a mediator between us and God except for Christ himself. So Christ is the high priest and all of us, by all that we do in our actions, that we are a representation of God. And we have it from the assignment of Adam and Eve as they are taking care of, of the world, that we ourselves are taking care of this broken world ourselves. And we're called into this incredible opportunity to participate in the activities of this world in such a way that when people see you, they see a representative, they see an ambassador, they see someone who represents Christ himself. And that way you're, you're a gateway person. You are a person who is pointing to the door, not that we can be God or we're not little gods ourselves in any way, shape, or form, but we are blessed being in the image of God that we can point the way to the door to Christ. And then people have their own opportunity and option to go through that door. But we have the privilege of pointing to that door to everyone that they meet. Now I know that um, it's been interesting sometimes being a, a minister. Um, very often it's easy for me to have God come up in a conversation with people. And it's not often you know, me that makes the first um, conversational move to talk about God, but it's the people who I meet. Maybe after, um, if it's a first time meeting and they ask, hey, what do you do? Um, then sometimes that will spur on a conversation about God. Um, sometimes, though it's really interesting that as a minister, there's this automatic attachment to God to my persona in different ways. And it carries a lot of responsibility. And I've had several youth over the years that I, I begin to see what was happening. Um, sometimes if someone had a tragedy in their life, either recently or, or in the past, and sometimes it's natural um, that if a tragedy happens in our lives, that we're upset with God um, because of what's going on as, as God is the, our heavenly father and something tragic happens around us. It's like, God, why did you let this happen? Well, then what I begin to notice is someone, sometimes, if they're angry at God, they're angry at me too. So I've noticed that um, occasionally, if someone's dealing with a tragedy and they're grumpy toward God, they're also grumpy toward me. And then not only in within youth occasionally, um, but also even within um, my own extended family, I've, I've noticed that as well. And I've, over the years, recognized, wow, 
I know what's going on. When people see you, I want to ask the question, now it's easy for me because I have this title stuck on me. It's harder for you. It really is. But I want to ask, when someone sees you, do they see you as a representative of God? And if they do see that, what is their impression of God? What are your mannerisms, your characteristics, the words that come out of your mouth? When someone sees you, do they see the qualities that God has? Do they see incredible love? Do they see grace? Do they, do they see truth? Do they see someone who is loving all people? Or is that getting hidden in your life by how other things are going on in your life? Is it getting hidden by certain attitudes of, of frustration and, and anger? Or is that getting hidden by your own sin? And that when people see you, they're reminded of of sin that exists in this world and brokenness in this world. You know, when we look at these passages, passages of being called as a priest representing God, that's, that's a heavy burden, but also incredible opportunity that as we allow ourselves to be used by God, to allow the Holy Spirit to work through us, to represent God in our actions and what we're doing, then it's an incredible opportunity. So as I look around, do people call, would they have an understanding of, of calling you Father John or Father Sally or, or Father whoever? Do they see you as representing God? Or do they see you someone who is independent of God? Do they see you as someone who they have no awareness that you're connected to God at all? You are. You have the opportunity to be a priest. Every one of us is created in the image of God and has the opportunity to participate in the kingdom of God. I have a, a question for us to meditate on this morning. And that's thinking on this reflection question. What are my most stressful environments and situations? And how do I bring God into these places? So think about, that's usually the really tough times. When we are stressed and we're at our, our weakness, do people see God in you in those situations? Or do they see just you in those situations? And it's a challenge for us. It's a challenge for me. As a representative of God, that carries a lot of weight. But as we fully just allow ourselves to open up, our authentic selves to open up to God, and we allow God to work through us, amazing things can happen. Now, as I say this message, one thing I don't want us to do is think that we have to put on a mask of pretend to say that I'm great and I'm a godly person. That's the worst thing that can happen because we, we all can see authenticity with each other. And it is perfectly fine that when we are in a stressful situation that we admit our weakness and our dependence upon God and we admit that we need a Savior and that we appreciate that. That authenticity is a great way to be a priest. It's a great way to point the door to Jesus because it points out our dependence upon God. And when we confess junk that's here with the people around us and we're confessional with that, that's an incredible way for people to understand how you're working with God and how as you're on your journey with God that you're dependent upon the Savior and not just dependent on yourself. So we don't want to wear a fake mask of pretend. We want to be our authentic selves, just pointing to Jesus and pointing the way. So as Linda plays this passage, think about what are your most stressful environments where you're tempted to not be at your best at pointing to Christ? 
and then begin thinking about how can I bring God into those situations? That as I bring God into that situation, that Jesus can be glorified as we point to him, our Savior. God, as we reflect on your incredible gift that you have given us of participating in your kingdom, we're reminded that it's an honor to be chosen as priests. And you have chosen all of us to represent you and your kingdom. So God, as we worship this morning, help us to be true to that calling. Help us to be true to that understanding that we are simply earthen vessels that you have created to point to you in your holiness, in your grace. So God, help us to be the person that you have called us to be. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Remember, as we continue living, as we leave this space, our worship continues just as much as when we're together. As you go, go in peace, but also recognize you're representing God as you go out into this broken world. We also warmly invite you. We have connection groups. We have classes that are available for all of you this morning. Um, Jerry's class is meeting in, back in the basement in the big area, and Dana's in the, in the kitchen in the basement in the smaller area, and Grover has a class um, just here on the left, and the anchors are, are meeting again. And so if you have any ideas or questions about where you can fit in the class, come and talk to me up here afterwards, and we will strive to, to help you find a place because when you meet together and study God's word, um, it's an incredible way to learn and then apply things in your own life. God, as we leave this room, we recognize that you are with us. And as we face whatever we have to face, we do so with full dependence upon you. Thank you for giving us that privilege and opportunity. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.
I, like Wednesday when I went home, I told Joni, I said, look, I, I don't know if I'm going to be here tomorrow. I feel pretty bad. I said, I'll do everything I can, but my body was aching and I was draining and everything. And, and then I called in to Ricky on Thursday and stayed home. I never ran a fever Thursday and then felt pretty rough. Friday morning, had a little bit of fever, just a little, just an eensy, like 99.9, you know, kind of a thing. So Kelly was like, maybe you better get a COVID test just in case. So I went and got a COVID test. That came back negative for COVID and for flu because they're doing a flu test now, or at least at the one out in Hanover by McDonald's, that new one. So I was just full, like, congested, and, and then it started to break up really well by um, – Friday night, I was feeling like I kind of turned the corner, and then yesterday, it got progressively better, so we'll see how it is trying to sing today, but, <clears throat> but yeah, it was, that's just part of it, though, because I know, like, the pollen count right now is really high. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm like that too because when I was a kid, I never had spring allergies. I only had fall allergies. Now it's flip flops. I don't really have any fall allergies. It's in the springtime when I get. Well, that's good. Yeah. yeah. So, oh well, if that's the worst that happens to me, I'll be in good shape. <laughs> See you, bud. Okay. Check, check. those things that I refer to as ankle biters? Yeah, or thorns in the flesh. Well. Thorns in the flesh, yeah. yeah. Well, I went to McDonald's this morning. To get Me too. Well, I had to buy one to get one for breakfast. It's not on the app. Yeah. And I brought it up. And then I was waiting in line and the screens closed down. And somehow when I opened it back up, it closed out with it. And the coupon was in there. So then I get back to the house and Phil's still in bed like doing his Sunday school stuff. I sit down in the bed just... Box brain. Hmm. Like, you like that, su that support slant? Well, no, it was like the, the wood in the frame of the oh. box spring. Like, I sat down, went to bed probably two months ago, and it shifted a little bit, but yeah. not, I think it cracked then, yeah. but I sat down this morning and it, oh, no. it completely broke. I'm hoping it's under one. We've had it less than a week. So Where'd you get it? Louisville, Arkansas. And he's like, you can be pretty Oh my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it's nothing major. It's just the yeah. little things that are trying to distract you. Money, money, uh, money grabbers. Every time you get ahead financially. That's how we are. Like, every time we get, like, our savings built up really nice, something super expensive happens. Like, two years ago, it was our chimney was falling into the, sinking into the ground. And that was $3,200. And then this year it was our sewage pump quit, and that was twenty, almost $2,300. <laughs> like, okay, well, I guess it's a good thing we have savings because otherwise we'd have to go into debt for that kind of stuff.
So this is just to see. Get me in there at the right time on this story. You had this robin that was mentally handicapped that was flying around our house. And he'd land on the windowsill outside and he'd kind of look in and he'd kind of lightly peck and then he'd kind of you know, do its little flapping and call or whatever. And we thought it was cute and everything until he started pooping all over the windowsills and the deck and everything. Like, Ooh, that was yeah, and so then he would every day. And he was flying around to every single window. And it wasn't, I know, understand that sometimes birds see their reflection. This was morning to night, yeah. and uh, the only relief was when the sun went down. So yesterday, while they were still in bed, I grabbed the BB gun, and sat down on the porch like Elmer Fudd, <laughs> and I waited for the thing. <laughs> Happy over the porch. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I waited for the thing to land on the deck, and sure enough, there he did. And put him in a box, and stuck him in the back. <laughs> As a side note, Kelly and Lucas are not to know that I killed them. Oh, that's why. Yeah. Okay, they don't know that. Uh, yeah. I, I understand. We have an addition this morning. Okay. Um, I want to do a special prayer for Josh and his aorta. Okay. Um, I was thinking, I forgot where we were thinking of getting it. I think we'll just do it at the end. The end end? The end. Okay. It's good to know. Okay. Thank you. And I'll have to invite people if they want to lay hands on me and stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Boom. I don't know. I feel like I say God. Is are you or who's preaching? You or Josh? Okay. Okay. I had it in my head, Josh. not much of a set. They'll do that throughout um, next week. She's taking, I think, tomorrow off at, at Shaw. I can't remember if she's taking the whole week off or not. Isn't that bad? I'm her husband. I don't know stuff like that. But Did you go watch? Did you watch the play? Yeah, we went last night. We watched it Friday. Do you know, did the kids write their own jokes? Yeah, they wrote their own jokes. Because that last girl, did you go see it? She was awkward. It was Alexa? No, um, no. Alyssa. 
I was a little confused by the whole. Yeah. I told Kelly, I said, she's like, did you like it? And I said, I liked, I liked it really well. I said, I, I thought the play was, was funny and clever. I said, there was just one girl that when she did her stand up, it was a little awkward, you know. Yeah. It, yeah, it was cute. What a second girl. It wasn't first. like, la like you courteous, courteously laughed so that, but it was cute. She was really, she did a good job. It was like, it was kind of awkward. Yeah. He's a new kid, literally. That's why he did the new kid thing. They're from, it's um, Colleen, who runs Richwood Plantation. Her nephew. Like, I guess her brother also moved in from New York recently, and they go to church. Is there an Elevation church nearby? They might go to that one. Okay. Yeah, he was good, and I think they worked some bugs out last night that they hadn't on Friday night. So. Friday night was funny because in the second, I think it was the second scene where they're in the car, like the whole, like the family's in there. Yeah. And the instructor, like they almost pushed her out of the car completely. <laughs> like the kid, one kid caught her. But <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. She's actually... It's, it's, it's really a god thing, because it's not been about the play or the theater for her. It's been her, like, interview life and she in the hospital. Because a lot of the kids come from, the majority of them come from divorced homes. They fight depression. Some of them cut themselves. Um, one of them has a sister who's on suicide watch. Um, and she comes to class every day torn up, worried about her sister. It was the one who who accidentally smashed her own phone. It's her sister who is on suicide watch. Mr. Jones? Yeah. That's just... But she's a sweet girl, you know, and, uh, and her sister Sarah was in class last year, and Kelly had a hard time with her. It was ups and downs. It was one minute she hated Kelly, and the next minute she was confiding in Kelly and asking for prayer, and the girl really messed up. Well, I mean, I didn't have no, it's Hopefully her mental illness and whatever's going on with her. But so Kelly, like Kelly, opened up Ephesians and preached the armor of God to him the other day in class. Because <laughs> <laughs> luckily, like, it's a Catholic she, school. And they she allowed, could, she well, and, her, and the pastor, or the pastor, the principal, And then pray to Mary and that kind of Amen. stuff. Yeah. And I'm not saying he's not a Catholic and, you know, and goes to a Baptist church. He probably does go to a Baptist church, <laughs> given the position that he's in. But he's just kind of, you know, not all Catholics are like that. Like, a lot of them actually get it. They get it. Well, that's what we're going to try to do. As soon as the band shows up. What? What the? What I do, I plugged in the end. That's all I did. Here, keep, keep playing. I want to be able to listen to music in the background. I'm not. I don't. I'm not using it. Anymore. Not using it's it's not even in the church. It's always something this week. It was fine last week. <laughs> that guitar last week and then I give up. You don't have to do anything when it's messed up. This week was just a bad cable. Every like part of the Everything's direct power right now. Trying to watch my uh, Okay, 
it's not the guitar. That's what they did at Madison Cathedral. <laughs> the maintenance men first order of business was, did you turn it off and turn it back on? just a guessing game, which is nobody here to help, and that's what you do. Well, what one thing you can do is go out there and listen to the speaker. I'm going to turn off this monsoon mode in order to know if it is coming out there like that. Are we on the second service setting now? Do we know?
show where you love it over here, baby. <laughs> Sounds called Fairly Love Island. if I can find it.
Mayday, Mayday. Gary, Mayday, Mayday. I need your help. Only, only in the speaker, not in the main. It's so much easier to get in there, but you, you can hear it even more than the train. You know, like everybody just says, you just have to go on that train. It's okay. It's, it's, it's an app for the, you know, it's all part of it. Once you do this, it's like, oh, you can go to any place, right? Thank you. 